I think we can be really hard on ourselves, especially in retrospect. And, you know, because again, Mike, I, I don't think you knew, like, did, did you know how, like, what is the best possible way to convey this information to people, you know, and, and who you were at that time and, and what you were experiencing and how you were processing that information, you know, for a while, like, that's how I kind of wanted to approach it. I wanted to be like, we're fucked, everybody, we're fucked, but yeah. nobody listens to you when you do that. You know, nobody right. takes you seriously. Um, even when you present scientific data, and this is like a, this is a fact about human beings, I think in general, like presenting data and presenting like scientific information doesn't convince people of anything necessarily. I mean, if they're predisposed to believing that stuff, then maybe, but if, but many people don't, that's not how people change their mind at all. And I think it's gotta be a narrative. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely about a narrative, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think we're, but I do think though, with more of the studies and more of the science that's out, there is at least, I can only speak of a, in America, there's at least a tide turning amongst people that believe in climate change and believe it's a threat. I think it's up to 70% now, which is a lot higher than what it was. So yeah. when I look at this, like we have a very unique opportunity on how we're going, what are we going to do with this rising tide of awareness? And uh, I think the right's going to try and seize on it eventually too. So we've got to be really careful. And like some of the things I think about is, you know, okay, I've, everyone's at different spots, but I'm at the point now where it's like, I get the science, but now what after the science, what do I do now? And, you know, what are my passions? Um, That's what I'm trying. And I'm interested in other people that are kind of, that's where they're at. What do they, what are they doing about this? And what are they passionate about? Because I feel like that's what we're going to learn things from. Like, for instance, uh, I don't know, he was a guest on, I think on your show, Patrick, and on mine, Dean Splane Walker, he's doing mm-hmm. this deep adaptation, uh, you know, course where he's trying to get into language and talking about how wh- how we talk to one another with this going on. And it like, that's the type of work I'm interested in. That's the type of work yeah. I want to gravitate to. Yeah, I think I think just like, okay, people are coming into this information and then the question that they're going to have after they start that grieving process or the whatever process you want to call it, whatever it is for them, um, then they're like, okay, so so now what? Are we just are we doomed to nihilistic despair? Like, is that really how we want to go? No. And, and that's why I want to really push back against elements within, I guess you could call it the Doomer community um that are like that because i'm like really is this how you want it to be is this what you really think this whole thing has been about like yeah i understand it's really disheartening obviously i am disheartened all the fucking time but don't but i'm not going to sit here and and just doom on everybody because they're human beings like that's not what i'm going to do and you know a person that i've talked to i just released an episode today with him um, my second interview with him, Joe, uh, Joe Brewer. And Joe Brewer is somebody who is working on building regenerative hubs. And he moved to Costa Rica with his family this last year. Um, and he's working on building uh, like regenerative systems. Like how do you design cultures? How do you, how do we make cultures that incorporate the ecosystems and bioregions that the people are in? How do we build those? And he's incredibly intelligent. He's multidisciplinary. I mean, he's, he's really amazing. He's, his intelligence is really astounding. And something he said that really stuck with me, like I'm thinking about it now is like, what can we do that is worthy of our hope? And that stuck with me because there's so much of this talk of like hopium, you know, like, oh, you don't give people any hope. Don't give people any hope because we're all doomed and doing that will just make people believe that there's a solution. Now, Joe is working on quote solutions, but with the full awareness that it's probably not going to work, that we're on a path towards our own self-destruction, that the planet is going to be irreversibly changed, and that we're not going to be able to regenerate it. That doesn't mean that he's not doing something. Like, I I don't think people, people want to do things based on an outcome only. Like, I'm going to do this job, I'm going to clock into my job because I know I'm going to get paid for it. I'm going to do this activist, activist thing because I know or I sense or I hope or I'm being told that if I go into this rally that it's going to make governments change their policies about whatever. And we shouldn't be doing it for that reason. We should do be doing it because we love the earth. And that's it. 
Like the earth is, doesn't no no species on this planet has deserved what is, has been given as a result of human um, industri- industrialization, right? None of them have, and we don't deserve it either. And, well, and I, yeah, sorry. I, I was going to say, I think that, you know, when you hear about these scientific studies and you read stories about uh, the rising far right politics and fascism across the globe and the fact that we have a white supremacist for our president. I mean, if somebody doesn't believe that you're hiding under a rock, he recently <laughs> to me, the story last week was that he's he's okay with people shooting immigrants that try to cross the border. He thinks it's hilarious. Yeah. Like, that was the story for me. But all these things, to me, are reminders and nudges on my shoulder that the planet is asking you to do something right now. And, And that's a different question that each of us need to answer. And I'm trying to figure out how to answer that question for me. And everyone's going to go about it differently. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing. I think part of it is we're all so conceptual and not there's not a lot of actual going on. And, you know, it sounds like Joe is is in the actual. He's actually doing something about it. it you know, get, whether or not it's going to come to anything, he's doing it because the sense in him is I have to do something. Um, and I, I think that's part of it is we we tend to overthink, you know, at least in you know, in the, the broader general population of the world, but is specifically the Doomer community, we like to talk about a lot of things and we like to think of you know, the conceptual of how this is all going to go down and what am I going to do if this happens and the, the, you know, the, the hordes start coming after us for our stuff. And instead of actually going, OK, what can I do today to make my day better, to make the people I interact with uh, their day a little better? And, um, you know, to have less impact on the planet. It's not going to save the planet, you know, just like me living out in a tent in the middle of nowhere is not going to save anything. But it changes your lens and how you interact with not only your own species, with other species. And that's all you can really do. I mean, you you can't control what's going to happen. You're not going to bring down this industrial model on your own or anything like that. But you can make choices in your day to day existence that, you know, one, keep you sane. And two, um, allow you to be a little gentler maybe with other people. And it's taken me a while, and I've still got a lot of rough edges. But being out here is really, I guess, reflected back to me um, sort of the asshole that I've been throughout (laughs) a a lot of my life. You know, I've been a pretty – I got a lot of friends, and I'm nice. But, you know, I got this cutting sarcasm, and you start to realize through the years, you're like, you know (laughs) – if you only believe you get one of these or even if you get multiple of these lives, you know, you might as well be nice to people and, you know, nice to the other species that are around there and and try and go through this without, you know, creating such a, a wake in your path. <laughs> mm, yeah. Well, Mike, your cutting sarcasm is why I invited you on this podcast. I don't know why you would cut that out. <laughs> right. It gets me gigs. <laughs> well, I was going to say, if you, it's like it's stay relevant. <laughs> if you started to learn guitar, Mike, that's a great uh, band name. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cutting sarcasm. That's Cutting sarcasm. That's fucking badass, man. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> no, well, I, I, oh, sorry. I think go on. too, like some, something that I'm trying, like I think about Patrick is when you and I uh, talked to Dar Jamal mm. and just the, I could feel the presence of him, like the warmth, the genuineness, mm. and it was all real. Um and I think it's that's what I think is important that we have conversations with people. And if you get to meet people in person, do it that maybe have similar views as you. But I always have walked away from that interaction with him and say, I need to, some of that for me. Yeah. And I got a lot of work to do, but I I want that. And, yeah. you know, he, the, the thing that like when we get back to the purity, the Puritan religion of this is. The, the the idea that he's changed his thinking that people are crapping on him for that, you know, is just right. astounding to me. Talk about a steward of the earth. Uh, yeah, yeah. That that kind of that that thing too. I think the the puritanical or the purity test um, is definitely present in the. Yeah, I want to say first before I shit on the Doomer community again, I just want to say something about it that's actually really nice, which is actually I do see quite often, very very often. People that come, they're online, they're in these groups, and they're like, I am, I don't know what to do. Like, I am overwhelmed. 
And there's, again, this is always from a distance because it's online. It's just chatting on writing, you know, to each other. But there's a lot of overwhelmingly supportive people out there. So I don't want to just shit on them. Oh, totally. yeah, I absolutely. just want to be very clear that like, I'm a part of this community <sighs> to some degree, I guess. I don't know. Um, and I see overwhelmingly great people all the time. It's just um, sometimes what I see also is if someone like Dar, for instance, is he, he has a best selling book, I imagine at this point is probably best selling. Um, he's been on all kinds of programs. He's you know, he's, he's very humble. And, uh, like you said, uh, Rob, he, he, maybe he isn't, it's funny, actually, he messaged me one time and, and I can't remember what event he was doing, but he's like, oh no, I think it was actually for the event we went and saw him at, at Powell's books, Rob, when he came and did his book release there. Um, and he, I think afterwards, like, was that do me enough for you guys? <laughs> he's like, he has to meet a certain criteria to be taken seriously by the doom community, you know? And I'm like, that's yeah, hilarious. Yeah. Dar. He's like, you're basically laying out in a, the, the best possible way how to live in this time, which doesn't necessarily include answers. It just is a feeling. It's a sentiment. It's a quality to his writing and his, his presence. That's really important. And he's just like, am I, was I doomy enough? <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, dude, you were talking about, when you talked about those glaciers, holy shit, man. Wow. Like, <laughs> like yeah, he, well, he, he knows. I, yeah. 